Cuba continues to reject the attitude of Israel not to cooperate, to strongly reject uh, the lack of cooperation of Israel. The Universal Periodic Review can and does affect real change in countries throughout the world. Such acts of non-cooperation should not be condoned. Tunisia considers that this is a case of persistent non-cooperation. Member states of the United Nations should question whatever Israel still has a place in these institutions. Shouldn't Israel be suspended like South Africa in the apartheid era? Should the Israeli delegation not be present, the UPR should be held in absentia. I will give the floor now to the United Nations Watch. Thank you, Madam President. World headlines were missed two months ago when Israel declined to attend its scheduled Universal Periodic Review and requested a postponement. Condemnations came from every quarter, including from many who usually pay little heed to what happens here, such as the editorial board of the New York Times. The accusers leveled three principal charges. Let us examine each one. First, it was said Israel's absence threatened to jeopardize a vital process. In the words of the Times, quote, a platform to scrutinize human rights and even the most closed and oppressive regimes. Second, it was said again in the words of the Times that Israel was hoping to, quote, duck criticism. Mr. President, Madam President, rather, we do believe the reviews have several positive aspects, and indeed we would like to see developments that would allow Israel's participation. But let us also recognize that this process has severe defects, as we detailed in our 100-page study, Mutual Praise Society. Let us recall what the Times itself wrote just two years ago. I quote, until Colonel Gaddafi's violent suppression in recent weeks, the United Nations Human Rights Council was kind in its judgment of Libya. In January, it produced a report on the country that reads like an international roll call of fulsome praise. Evidently, within the 47 Nation Council, I'm continuing to quote from the New York Times, some pots are loath to call kettles black, at least until events force their hand. End quote. Let me quote also from a great champion of the Council, Suzanne Nossel, a former senior U.S. official who was serving last year as director of Amnesty USA. She called that report on Libya, quote, abhorrent. Madam President, it is also said that Israel is violating the principle of universality. Many groups, many countries have said that today. Have any of these individuals, have any of these groups spoken out to say that the principle of universality is denied? when only one country in the world is subjected to its own agenda item? Did anyone speak out when Israel is the only country in the world denied membership in any regional group? Did anyone speak out when Israel is made the object of half of all country resolutions, when it's the only country to have a mandate that looks at only one side? Thank you, Madam President.